So I cyberpunked my PC, and so can you. So if you watched my last video when I actually built this machine, I commented on you know, not really caring about RGB lighting or aesthetics or anything that awful much. And if I was going to do some RGB lighting or something like that, I would want it to be custom. Well, that ended up coming a little quicker than I had thought. And the reason that I went with this lighting so quickly is that I discovered that the cheap WS2812B light strips that are used commonly for you know, maker creations and in the Arduino and Raspberry Pi world uh, for cosplay, that kind of stuff, uh, these same strips are compatible with the five volt ARGB headers on, the, on most motherboards. So I was able to use these cheap strips that I already had laying around uh, to build this. Now there's really only two components to this, to this lighting setup. Uh, there's an RGB strip that goes around the three corners of the case and that's self sticky to the back of the case. Uh, and then there's the Cyberpunk logo um, on a 3D printed base up here in front. So first let's talk about these RGB strips. As I mentioned, these are WS2812Bs. Uh, you may also hear them referred to as NeoPixels. Uh, and they are individually addressable LED lights. So that means that you can specify any light in the entire strip and assign a specific color and brightness to it independent of all the other lights in the strip. Uh, what I would like to do in the future is switch over from the motherboard based headers to uh, an ESP controller like that's controlling the uh, the audio panels so that I'll have more control over what lights do what and I can do fades, I can do independent coloring of the two strips, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but that's future project. Today we're talking about these strips. You can get these strips, first of all you can get them in different densities. So I used a higher density strip for the, uh, the, the Cyberpunk logo and a lower density strip for the surround lighting. Uh, mainly because if you use lower density strips behind the logo, the, 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 there would be hot and dark spots between the LEDs and that would be no, more noticeable with, with lower light density. Whereas around the outside of the case, uh, it, all it's really doing is ambiently lighting the inside. Um, so you don't really notice the additional space between the LEDs. Um, so I happen to have those strips laying around. If you don't, you can buy a single strip of you know mid density, I think it's 30, 30 lights per meter, something along those lines, um, medium density, WS2812Bs, use them for both the outside strip as well as behind the panel and be just fine. Now they do come in both 5 and 12 volts. The 5 volt header on the, on the motherboards, those are the ones that take WS1, WS2812 individually addressable strips. You cannot buy a 12 volt WS2812B and attach it to the 12 volt header. Those headers are uh, RGB channel based uh, uh, circuits and not digital signal based circuits. So they're, they're not compatible. You can't plug them into each other and, and just expect them to work. So be warned, these are by the five volt strips connecting to the five volt letters. Done. Now to get through this setup, uh, you're going to need to know a little bit of electricity, not necessarily electronics. So you're going to need to know uh, probably a little bit of crimping uh, and a little bit of soldering. Uh, and then the housing for the, the logo panel is 3D printed. So if you wanted to make this panel, you're going to need a 3D printer as well. Uh, in addition, the front is vinyl cut. So there are other options besides just vinyl cutting to, to kind of make the silhouette for the logo. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about those uh, in a minute. So if we get a little closer inside the case, you can see this white strip running just inside this, this edge of the case. You can't see it from the profile. You can only see it if you're kind of really looking into it. Uh, and this strip came with adhesive on the back. All I had to do was peel and stick. Here, I have some over here. Uh, this is the remnants of that strip. And it has regular old 3M peel and stick adhesive on the back, so I didn't have to do anything to make the strip stick. Uh, you can get double-sided tape if you don't have adhesive-backed uh, strips, but uh, uh, that's all that's holding that on there. And it's not, it's not fantastic, like it'll probably end up falling eventually and I'll you know, hot glue it or something more substantial, but it works for now. Um, and as you can see, uh, the wires are, you know, it's soldered to the strip and then it immediately goes through the floor and then it pulls out the back. Uh, I may have to get a picture there and attaches to the header in the back. All very clean. You don't see a lot of wires running everywhere, uh, but you do see that strip going along the entire interior and down the opposite side. That's all there is to, to that strip. Uh, and as long as you wire them correctly, you're good to go. 
Now the Cyberpunk logo is in a 3D printed frame, and this is just vinyl uh, left on the backing. I didn't peel it off the backing and stick it in anything. Uh, it's just sitting on the backing, pressed into the frame. That, there's nothing really holding it there. If you poke on it, it'll, it'll sink into the, into the frame. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you how this thing is designed, but this is just sitting there. Uh, there's no, no screws or anything like that. If you shake it, um, it'll, it'll rattle around. Uh, now, it doesn't really go anywhere because these wires from the, the video card are kind of pressing, pressing it in place. Uh, so it doesn't move a whole lot even if you move the case. Uh, but uh, you know, if you wanted to get fancy, you could double side it down or something along those lines. And as you can see, that wire, uh, the wires come out of the, uh, dropping it, come out of the casing, uh, go back behind the, the wire management bar, and then they pop out into the header there. And these are kind of done twice because I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted to plug them in. So there's kind of this wire, this uh, you know additional adapter in the middle that I can unplug here. So I can remove that from the case without having to refeed everything. First, I'm going to talk about the wiring a little bit. Uh, let me pull one of these out. I will pull this guy out. So this is a custom cable uh, that I had to build and crimp myself. And the reason is that WS2812Bs use three pins. Uh, the, the header also uses three pins, but it uses it in a four pin connection. So uh, you can't just take this and plug it into the header uh, because it's two pins, a gap, and then one pin on the header. Uh, as you can see there, there's, there's only three pins in use, but it's pins one, three, and four, or I guess one, two, and four, depending on how you orient yourself, if you look at it that way, one, two, and four. Um, and the reason they did that is that if you have just three pins in a row, there's nothing intrinsic to the plug to keep you from plugging it in backwards or upside down. That three pins, you know, focus. Three pins oriented like that and three pins oriented like that are identical. Uh, so unless they built something, you know, additional into the plug, there's no way to keep you from plugging it in backwards, which would reverse ground and voltage and probably fry your, your, uh, your strip. So what they opted to do was put in a four pin connector, block one of the pins so you can't possibly plug it in and connect you know, all four pins, or all three pins, um, with that blocker in place. So it's a good idea, uh, but it does mean that you can't just plug these strips in natively, and you have to build this, this converter cable. Um, so that's why I have this thing that uh, is three pins going to this cable, which is four pins with the missing pin. I don't have a blocker, uh, but it, it does have the, the blank in it. Now, luckily, they, uh, they label those pins very clearly on this board. Uh, you can definitely see, oops, hold on. Uh, you can definitely see a voltage, a signal, which is D, and a ground uh, on that pin header. Uh, so it, it's, there's no mystery on how they connect, which is, which is great. So, and then looking at this plug, uh, red is voltage, white is ground, and green is, uh, is the signal. Okay. So now what we did in this thing, and I hesitate to take this apart because it was difficult to get together because again, it's only, only the, the sheet of vinyl in here. What I, there's a number of options for this front panel. I, I only have the vinyl sheet in here. I have a piece of acrylic coming in in the next few days. Uh, it, it's taking a little while to ship. Uh, a piece of acrylic that I will stick this vinyl to, and then on the back I'll put on like a cloudy sheet to help diffuse the light. And then you know I won't have this problem of this thing being you know all curly and and you know crappy. Um, but I didn't want to wait for a few days. You know the, the game will have released uh, by then, uh, so I wanted to get this video up uh, even though I don't have that acrylic part in. You could also theoretically 3D print something. Um, you know some of these you know it'd be hard to get the floating inner parts of some of the, the letters, but you could 3D print something as well. Uh, you could cut something out of construction paper and, and you know, lay it in there. Uh, there's a number of ways you could you can make this. Vinyl cutting is accurate and easy. Um, so, and I'll leave, this is a simplified version of the Cyberpunk logo. The, there's less dirt in the letters. The 2077 was, was built, uh, was expanded a bit. Uh, I'll leave a link to that SVG that you can use for your own vinyl cutter if you like. Uh, I'll leave that below. But um, this thing is easy to take apart. It's just two pieces. It's a frame and then just a pressure fit 
backing. So you can pull it apart, frames off. Uh, and this is the vinyl piece. I, I used electrical tape to kind of hold it on to the, under the frame. Uh, but if you look inside, all you have is strips of WS8212B uh, LEDs. So it's exactly these things taken out of their waterproof casing and then laid out in a three row or three column. No, that's three rows, a three row pattern in the casing. Now, wiring these things can be a little tricky the first time. It's, you know, if, it's not bad once you, you kind of know what you're doing. Um, if you look on the individual strips, let's see if I can get it to focus that close. You can see a plus five volts, a DL and a minus, and then you see an arrow next to the, the, the D. Uh, for instance, this arrow is pointing that way. Uh, that tells you which direction the signal goes. Because uh, these things, are, they're, the way they work, uh, there's a complex timer that relies on the previous LED performing an action and transmitting the signal to the next LED. Uh, that's why there is directionality to the signal, whereas the plus and minus, the power, the, the voltage and the ground, those can be attached anywhere. Like I could have attached them over here, I could have attached them on both sides. Uh, voltage and ground don't matter as long as you have, have them frequent enough that, that they can power all the LEDs. So what I did is that the black wire coming in is ground that's attached to the negative, then wired up to the negative, then wired up to the negative. The red wire coming in is voltage that's attached to the plus five, to the plus five, and to the plus five. Uh, and then the signal, it comes in through this green wire, attaches to the D1 on this strip, goes to the end, it's wired back to the, the left side of this strip, goes to the end, back to the left side of this strip, and goes to the end. I could have flipped these, I could have had this one going this direction and this one going this direction, and then had a shorter wire, but eventually, when I do want to start individually addressing these things, uh, I want them laid out left to right, uh, so I can just work in offsets if I wanted to have something you know, move across the, across the, uh, uh, the field, uh, then I know it's you know, LED 1, LED 12, LED 24, or whatever the numbers may be, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. Uh, so it makes it easy if you have them laid out in the, the, the same orientation when you want to start individually addressing them. All right, and then that just wires out to just the three-pin connector, which goes into our other cable, uh, and then converts the three-pin to the four-pin. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, I'm going to try to put this back together. It's, fortunately, it came untaped, but uh, it tends to curl because the vinyl comes on big sheets. So like this is a gigantic sheet of matte black vinyl. Uh, so I can make a gazillion of these for 20 bucks. All this stuff is, is cheap, um, but you have to buy it in, in a collection, like you can't just buy this much vinyl, otherwise you, you, know, you, probably, you, may, you may be able to, you'll just pay out the butt. Whereas you can buy 30, you know, 30 meters of it for 30 bucks or whatever it is. Um, and that goes for these strips as well. These strips are uh, about $25 or so for, I think it's four meters, so about 12 feet. Uh, so, you know, I have probably, probably about a half a strip in there. Uh, so if you add it up, it's maybe, you know, $13 worth of LEDs. Printer filament, you know, this much filament costs nothing. It, you know, let's say $2 worth of filament. Um, the vinyl, like I said, is the, vinyl, the vinyl is dirt cheap if, if you already have some laying around. Uh, some hookup wire and connectors, you, you know. Again, you have to buy them in aggregate. Like, you have to buy 100 yards of, of wire unless you're, you know, you pay an exorbitant price. It's the same price for 100 yards as, as it is for 10, I guarantee it. Um, um, and then like the crimp ends and stuff like that, that's all, you know, individually they're worth pennies, but you have to buy by the package, which is, you know, 20 bucks. Uh, so I probably only have $25, probably less than that of materials actually sunk into all of this stuff. Uh, but again, you have to buy it all in bulk. So you can't just say, I want to spend $25 in this project. You have to you know, buy the kits and, and, you know, overbuy what you need to make this all work. So that's how, how it's done. Uh, that's how it works. One of the great things about this design is that, you know, right now I have Cyberpunk in there, but there's nothing to stop me from cutting out a 
Gears or a Far Cry or any other logo uh, and sticking it on there. Like, it, you know, that's you can change it for 18 cents worth of vinyl and, and a couple of minutes of time. Uh, so it's kind of future proof as well. Uh, it's really the frame that is the part that took some labor and is a bit durable. So that's how I cyberpunked my PC. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please leave a like. If you liked my other videos, please subscribe and I will see you in the next one.